CSS is getting to this incredible place. There's so many new exciting things coming to it. It's actually kind of overwhelming almost to a certain extent, all the new things that are coming. But despite all that, I'm actually really sad about something because I feel like one of the best things to come to CSS in a long time has just been forgotten about with all these new other cool things that are coming up. I want to raise awareness about that so maybe we could actually start seeing some movement and implementation of it. And that thing is subgrid. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, we learn about how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials with a very large focus on CSS. When Grid first came up, it was just like all the hotness, all the browsers sort of just jumped on it, implemented it really quickly. It was incredible and it opened up new doors to creating layouts that we never had possible before, a new level of control. It was really, really cool. But part of the spec of Grid was subgrid and they actually pulled that off. They wanted to make sure the browsers could implement Grid quickly. And so they pulled subgrid off to the level two part of that spec, of the grid spec. The only browser that then made it to level two since then, which has been a long time now, is Firefox. Firefox actually implemented subgrid pretty quickly after grid implementation. When that happened, I just assumed the other browsers would pick it up, but nobody has. And because you don't hear about subgrid at all, people don't realize they want it because they don't even know what it is. <laughs> so it just sort of seems to have gotten forgotten about and there's all this momentum behind other things. And I just want to show people why I wish Subgrid was implemented. And I'm going to be using this month to put out lots of videos on Subgrid to show all the possibilities and all the amazing things you can do with it. I think that because nobody's talking about it, the browsers go, well, nobody, nobody wants it because there's no, there's no movement. There's no talk. There's no chatter. There's nobody that's filing bug reports on it. There's no one showing interest in it. So it just has gotten forgotten about. And I want people to get excited about it and push for it so we can actually tell the browsers, no, this is something we want. Can you please start putting some resources behind it? So in this video, it's going to be just a breakdown of the very basics of subgrid. And then in future videos throughout this month, we're going to be taking it from the simple example that we're looking at this week, and we're going to be pushing it into more practical layouts in ways that you'd actually be using it in the real world and the problems that we can run into without subgrid and how subgrid can solve those problems. I'm really looking forward to this. I really hope that you're looking forward to it as well. So let's dive into the code. All right, so we're gonna get started on this. I've styled up some basic things just so we have something to visualize to speed things up a little bit. And what we're going to do is, and um, let's just take a look. We have a main grid and in my main grid, I have two inner grids that we're gonna turn into inner grids in a second. Uh, and then we have these boxes that are inside of there. So, and everything just has some colors on it so we can see them to make our life a little bit easier. And I'm going to come on here and first on my main grid, we wanna make it into a grid because that makes sense. Uh, nothing will change yet. So let's come in and create some grid template columns. And we're gonna create three columns. Uh, let's do four actually. So we'll use the repeat syntax, repeat of four, one FR. And just really quick, if you haven't used grid at all, you've never touched grid, and some of these things might look a little bit unfamiliar to you because Grid does do things a little bit different um, and there's new things with it. So I do have a playlist that looks at the basics of Grid itself that might be useful before you get into Subgrid. So if you wanna check that out, there should be a card popping up now and it's also linked in the description down below. And let's do a repeat of four and I'll do 150 pixels here just to set up a bit of a grid. Uh, we can't see the whole thing, but in Firefox, we can help visualize it in our dev tools. So they are off screen just to create some room, but actually I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, so if you find the element in your DOM here, you can toggle your grid visualizer on and off. And you can also find your grid down here. Uh, there it is, my main grid. I can turn it off there in the layout tab in Firefox as well. And I'll leave that off screen. And you can see it's created all those boxes here. Each one of those is one of my cells. So four across and four down, just like that. And what I'm actually gonna do, let's, call, let's do inner grid, um, inner, grid two, just because we are going to modify that one a little bit as well uh, in a second. And I'm actually going to call this one inner grid, inner grid one, again, just so we can have some differences between them. And fun fact, if you, you can use numbers in classes, but if you have a class or ID that starts with a number, it is invalid. And so never do that. It's one of those weird things in CSS that sometimes trip people up. Um, so for my inner grids, the first thing I'm going to do is let's place them on the grid that we have. So we'll do a, a grid column and I'm going to say one over negative one for now, which means it's just going to stretch the whole thing. And both of them are doing the same thing like that. And sometimes just because I am in code pen, sometimes these grids will turn off. 
And just to make it easier to see everything, I'm also gonna add a gap here on the main grid itself, which separates everything a little bit. And so I know with the visualizer, there are like a lot of things covering each other right now with the colors I have. So I'll turn them on and off just to make sure that what we're looking at is really clear. Uh, another thing I'm gonna do on my inner grid here is we're gonna do a grid row. And I'm just gonna say span two. So we're not overlapping them, but each one will take up two. So they are falling on the parent grid right now. And with regular grid now, if we wanted to place the inner, these boxes on the inner grid, we'd have to go on the inner grid, we'd have to create our new grid there and then place the items on that. And we sort of have to take that same step with subgrid. So these ones are placing it on the parent grid. And then what we need to do is do a display of grid. So it's now a grid item, but it's also a grid parent. And you can see that's changed things a little bit. And that's just because the default behaviors with grid are a little bit different. And then what I'm gonna say is grid template columns is instead of actually defining them here, I'm gonna write subgrid. And now you can see that the children are being placed on the, the, the children of inner grid are being placed on main, they're using the main grid grid, <laughs> which is really, really, really cool. And then I could take that like a step further and I could say that my uh, box uh, two is going to be a grid column of span two and then they're going to span two and again they're looking at the parents grid and not they're looking at the grandparents grid and not the parents grid or actually the grids are the same sort of um, they're sharing the grid uh, that's happening here which is super super cool and you can do some really interesting things with that uh, one thing that's actually kind of interesting, and this is why I made an inner grid one and an inner grid two because there are a few things where it can get interesting uh, so if I choose my inner grid one, which is the top one up here, there's a few things that we can do. So I'm actually going to say that on this one, the grid column is a two over negative one. So it's going to start at line two and then go to line five. And if we do something like this, when we're using our line numbers, things become a little bit different. And actually when you turn on in the dev tools, when you turn on a subgrid, uh, what it's showing you is the line number. It's going to show you the original grid and the subgrid itself just because there are some differences between them uh, But the subgrid is dependent on the grid itself So it's important to know and you can see that even though the main grid has one two three four five Which are being covered up a little bit the subgrid is starting at one So that's something really important to know that can get a little bit confusing sometimes if you're not starting You know if you're doing that you're moving things on the main grid um, just that it could run in, you know, you're not using your main grids line numbers. You still are using your subgrids line numbers, which is important to know the difference. So, uh, depending on what you're doing in there. So say we did my dot box one is a grid column of one over three. This one down here will go from one to three. And then the next one is a span two. but then over here, this is actually breaking things a little bit. Uh, because this is going from one to three and then this one is a span two. There's not enough room to span two over on this side So it has to go underneath to be able to accomplish that there's ways we could overlap content because overlapping content with grid is super easy to do uh, But just to show you a few of the, the the little gotchas that can sometimes come up with things like this Now one thing you might actually be wondering. Let's turn this guy off for now um, you might be wondering why here they're stretching this entire space when it looks like there's this grid inside of here, right? So the, and even we'll set it up, let's say box dot box grid call a uh, grid row is a span one and they're still going to stretch across both of them right now. And the reason that this is happening is the rows we've, we've only set up the subgrid for our columns. So my grid, my inner grid is going all the way across this way and it's spanning two rows on the parent, but the subgrid is only being applied to my columns right now. So even though the main grid has two call or two rows here, the subgrid only has one. So if you wanted to take advantage of that, you could also go grid template rows, and then you could do subgrid here as well. And now you can see that both the template rows and template columns are being respected. And then you could come and do some fun things. Uh, here we could do our grid row is also a span two. And then they'll start spanning. Now, another thing that's really interesting is you can also take advantage of grid template areas on the main grid. So if I come here and I say grid template areas, and we'll do a really simple, we'll do a one, 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 one uh, across the top, and then we'll do a two, 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 
And we'll do a three just for fun. I don't even know if we'll use it. Um, but now you can see one, 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 two, 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 and all of that. And that's actually on my subgrid. Uh, so let's turn my main grid. Oh, actually, we need more of those. So we'll do three, um, sorry, four, 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 and then a, whoops. And then last but not least, a five, 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 five. Um, so now we can see all those grid areas are the area names are being defined on the main grid and an interesting thing here is you don't have to do a grid area like we don't have to um, declare this because if I come on to my let's do my box uh, we'll do the first one so we did inner grid one and my uh, we'll say the inside of there the box one and I'm being a bit more explicit here than you might want to uh, but we could actually say that this is grid uh, grid area of two and it's going to move into the two uh, and it's actually overlapping with the other one so let's delete this here uh, yeah I'll just comment this out so if any case anybody wants to play with these a little bit uh, and then we could say that the inner grid one box uh, one is on the grid area of one and it's going to live in that area of one uh, and one thing that's oh this should be box two sorry about that box two. Um, and what's really interesting with this is it's only using the areas that are in that grid, right? Because remember, I, I pushed this one over. So it's this pink box. If we turn off my grid for a second, it's only using the areas that are within this pink box. So it's not going to like pull it outside onto that main grid area. It's only looking at the ones that are still named that within this space, which I find really interesting. And then let's just repeat this at the bottom. Uh, so my box, we'll just do our two and our uh, yeah, two and two. There we go. Uh, and so we can see it's a little bit different here and in how it's working, but that makes a lot of sense, I think. Uh, and of course, uh, this shouldn't actually be one and two, though. This should be a four and five, let's say. And you could do something like that uh, or inverse them or whatever you want to do. But they're going to live in the areas that are defined on the the main grid and not on the subgrid, right? So I find that really cool. We're, we're defining everything on the bigger picture and not on the smaller picture. It's really, really exciting. Uh, and there's a lot more that you can do with this. So I'm going to leave the link to this code pen here and I want you to play around with it, have some fun with it. Again, it has to be in Firefox. And granted, looking at it like this is very abstract and it might be like, okay, I sort of understand how it's working, but why should I care about this and why is it important? Hopefully some ideas are already circulating in your head. You could take this link and do more with it, play with it a little bit if you want to experiment inside this code pen. Uh, but also for the rest of this month, the other videos that I'm going to be coming out with are going to be using subgrid in more practical ways and showing them in actual layouts and playing around with them in situations where you might actually run into in the real world. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to make sure you don't miss any of those videos and you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And with that, a really big thank you to Zach, Randy, and Stuart for my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.